what God is looking for is people who are faithful with what he gives them and has a good attitude about it while they do it. Bruce Lawn. In the house with us tonight, he's a man of his word, KJ Scriven. Man, I was jamming out to the record What's last up, night. The, your song with Chandler and Maverick City has been probably the anthem of my life for the past four or five months. I know I'm late to it. I know it came out last year. I told my wife, I was like, have you heard this song? She's like, you're silly. This came out like a year ago. You're late. But uh, Man of Your Word has been on repeat nonstop. But we've known each other for quite a while. And you have an amazing uh, worship heart. Yeah. But you also got an amazing heart for discipleship and ministry and, and the local church. Thanks for having me on, man. Excited about everything that's happening uh, with Man of Your Word and all that. I don't know if you've heard, we got nominated for Grammy for Best Performance with that song. So Let's go! We'll find out. Yes, sir. So, uh, so man, God is so good. And, and I'll tell you about that story about that. It's so crazy later. But anyway, one of the things that, that, um, that the Lord has had me heavy in is uh, Matthew 25, Parable mm. of the Talents. I've been really focused on it and, and within that story. Um, there's a, so many takeaways from that parable, right? But one of the takeaways that I love so much is that um, for those who are listening, I'm not familiar with the parable. Jesus basically says there's a there's a master. He has uh, three servants. It says he gives each servant um, a talent, which is just an mm -hmm. amount of money. Mm -hmm. And he says he gives each servant something according to their ability. Come on. And so one person had one talent. He gave one, two, and he gave another five. Um, so when he came back to to see what they did, you know, with what he gave them, the one who had two turned his to four. The one who had five flipped yep. his, turned his to ten. Yep. But the one who had one was upset that he had mm -hmm. one and hmm. he just buried it and didn't do anything with it. And, uh, and so we could talk about the one who had one talent, but just for this conversation, I want to focus on the, 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 the guys who had two and the guys who had uh, five. Yep. And what I don't think we pull out of that story often is the fact that both of them got the same exact reward, although mm. they brought back different metrics. They Come brought on. different results, but they got the same reward. And so because God um, in the kingdom, it, it's not so much about the metric, it's more about what is your faithfulness. And it literally says, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. And mm. I literally looked up and I was like, well, if it's a good servant, does that mean that, you know, we're talking about works and stuff here? And it's mm -hmm. actually not what he's talking about at all. When it says good, mm. it literally means like a good attitude. If you look up the like the, the root the root word, I won't get all into it. But it literally just means cheerful, a good attitude. Yeah. yeah. So what God is looking for is people who are faithful with what he gives them and has a good attitude about it while they do yep. it. Yep. And yep. so he calls those servants good and faithful and he calls the one one evil and lazy. I'm saying that to say encouragement wise, you have what you need, first off. Number two. Um, be a good and faithful servant with what he has given you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry so much about the metrics all the time, but just worry about being good and faithful. Mm -hmm. And uh, comparison is a thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to to others. So that's what I would say. Man, and it's so good you say that because what people miss about that chapter is that it goes from the parable of the of the talents to the story of the least of these. So it's Bingo. almost this, this this tension of like, hey, be faithful with your time, your talent, your treasure. Specifically, the parable was about money, but be faithful with these things. And then it goes right into, hey, when I was when I was naked, you clothed me. When I, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in jail, you visited me, right? And they're like, when, when did we do this? And he said, whatever you've done to the least of these. There I say, our stewardship on this side of eternity directly goes into us being able to be a blessing because we've been a blessing blessing, right? We look at the talent and we go, oh, well, you know, uh, he has five talents. And it's like, guys, if you're in North America watching this on a smart device with, with yeah. high speed internet, fam, you, you're rich. you got, you're rich globally. You're literally, I think, I think I did the math and it was like, if you, if you, if you make $30,000 or more a year, you are in the top 2% of the yeah. world's global income, the top 2%. You know, and so and so I think it's so important for us just to just to have that generous heart, be willing to give back uh, because 
when we all come together and collectively do something small, like people's cha- people we may not even meet until we get to the kingdom, but people that Amen. like we'll get updated and we'll see how this thing plays out, man. T- tell us what you got coming up with music um, and and, yeah. and everything you got going because you got a lot of a lot of amazing things you're doing. Tell the people what they could expect from you and, and, and the whole Maverick City fam and everything y'all got going on. Absolutely, man. Um, well, I'm definitely gonna be dropping a lot more music. Um, this year, um, got a few singles um, already in the queue, ready to go. So be looking out for some uh, music from me, um, for sure. I also have a worship mentorship program called Life in Song, mm. and so um, f- so for worship leaders and really leaders in general, I have a program, uh, comprehensive, uh, spirit led, but also um, I look at your wiring, how God has designed mm-hmm. you and made you, and um, and try to figure out how to help you uh, get the most out of um, who God has made you to be. So Life and Song, that's coming um, as well. So um, Mav fam, uh, obviously just got off of a tour. More music coming for sure. More music coming for sure, as always. Yeah, y'all um, like a factory over there, man. It's just literally it's just bang, 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 bang. I'm like, I'm listening to the Juneteenth album. All of a sudden, there's a there's a daggone Christmas album. I'm like, wait a minute, I ain't even got through the June. Yo, exactly. it, you guys are crushing, man. But, but to, man, to put it in context, people ask about that all the time. They're like, how, mm-hmm. how are they doing that? Well, a part of it is we do these writing camps. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. at each writing camp, you know, you got, you know, 40 or 50 writers. And then we'll sit in groups for of two or three people for, mm-hmm. you know, two or three hours. And so you write two or three songs a day. You times that by 40 or 50 people. Do that a couple times a year. <laughs> you got a lot of songs yeah. to choose from. Yeah. So, and it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you guys are very, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but it sounds like you guys are always in positions to, are looking for new talent, are looking for people to mentor, are looking for people to disciple, that it's not just this like super closed circle and can't nobody, you know what I mean? Like y'all seem very open Absolutely. and generous. That is, is that a fair assessment of what Absolutely. the whole Mav fam is doing? Absolutely, no doubt. Okay. And you know, a big thing too, man, I think that a lot of people don't even understand about the just the, the genesis of it in general is that Tony Brown, who's the creator and C- CEO of it, wrote a song, actually, Deshaun Mitchell did a song called Joy, and that was a song that Tony wrote with a group that he also started called House Fires. And so Tony noticed at the Dove Awards that the song was, it was the same song, but he noticed it was kind of called, it was called Contemporary or Urban Gospel or something yeah, like yeah, that because yeah, yeah basically a black artist sang it you know right. and so he's like man why is it called a totally different almost like a totally different category because somebody else sang it so he's like man mm-hmm. we need to start bringing people together mm-hmm. and so um he's like man what would happen if we got these these uh contemporary christian artists and these gospel artists in the same room mm-hmm. um what would come from that and and that's literally what 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 happened with Maverick. Industry takeover. Awesome. Industry takeover is what came from that. <laughs> Got the foot on the neck of the industry. How well, many? And, I'm, and, uh, go ahead. Bro, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You know, the point was Maverick was not supposed to initially be this big artist conglomerate. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to just be a writing sort of cohort, mm, a writing okay. group. But mm-hmm. as they start putting the songs, the songs were so different and fresh. Sometimes mm-hmm. people, you know, th- some of the artists and bands weren't super receptive to it. So mm-hmm. Tony said, "Well, fine. I'll let these. I'll let these independent artists and writers. I'll let them sing their own songs that they're writing." And then, boom, it took off. And so wow. that's another example. It's like, don't get mad if everybody doesn't get it. You know, basically, when when uh, Rus, I know you hoop. One of the things when when you play basketball. And if somebody uh, might score on you, but your team is winning by 30 or 40 points, you'll say scoreboard, scoreboard, right. look at the scoreboard. Right. right. And so I think it's important for us to always keep our eye <laughs> I see, not I on, see the, what, on the I see what you did game, there. Keep our eye on the scoreboard. Yeah. You know, yeah. You never know what God is trying to do. So that's so good. Ladies and gentlemen, KJ Scriven, make sure y'all go follow him, show him some love, love on the socials. We'll have you back on the channel, I'm sure sooner than we uh, can imagine. Thank you so much for calling in, my brother. Honor, bro. Peace. Kingstream Entertainment.
Bruce Lawn. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you found a value, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out the links in the description for a free How to Study the Bible course, a free niche training if you're looking to get into the Christian creator space, and a free Master My Habits course. Check out these other recommended videos in the description, all right? Peace.